want you to put your hands together and welcome him to the stage. Big round of applause for Jackson Heights' own Mr. Randy Watson. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. Mm -hmm. Good and terrible. Welcome to the 14th episode of Wings and Wine. My name is Derek, also known as City Needs Me. You can find me on all social media platforms at City Needs Me. You can follow the Wings and Wine page on Instagram at WingsXWine. Today, I'm going to do a film review on the movie Coming to America, the number two, which is a sequel to Coming to America from 1988. I didn't grow my hair out. This is a wig that I had from Halloween and it just happened to match the Soul Glow wig or style from back in the 1988 film Coming to America. So I figured I'd pay homage and put the wig on for a little bit. But um, the movie Coming to America, it's been getting some mixed reviews. So I wanted to go ahead and get my take on it because I am a huge fan of the original. It's actually my second favorite movie. So I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of insight on how it was. So let's go ahead and get this episode started. Before we do the film review, I wanted to tell you about the wings and the wine that we have today. For the wings, I got Mario's Six Pepper Blend. Now this is Mario's East Side Saloon, which is in the Shady Side neighborhood of Pittsburgh. I've had their food before and it is typically very good. For the wine, we have Other People's Pino, which is made by Mason Noir Wines. And this is a black owned brand made by Andre Mack. This is probably the second time I've actually had this wine. And it is good. I'll give you the full review as we get to that point. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and give you a rundown of what we're actually going to be reviewing today after the film review. Coming to America, which was recently released, is a sequel to the film Coming to America from 1988, which starred Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. This movie also stars Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, but it also features characters from the original, such as James Earl Jones and... Uh, Sherry Headley and it does include newcomers such as uh, Jermaine Fowler. Leslie Jones is also in this. Kiki Lane is also in this who plays Eddie Murphy's oldest daughter. Um, you also have uh, several other characters. You'd have to check the whole IMDB list to actually go through that. I'm not going to get into that. But the film, I felt like it served its purpose. I think that it was a proper sequel to the original for it to be so long from the original it wasn't something that it just picked up immediately from the 1988 film it's as if it was 30 years later from the original film so you have Eddie Murphy who comes back as Prince Akeem and he is coming to the point where he's taking the throne of Zamunda because his father played by James Earl Jones who's King Joffrey Joffer is actually passing away so the film does feature a lot of comedy. Um, there are points where it's heartfelt, but the comedy is definitely still there. Eddie Murphy is still Eddie Murphy, but obviously he's not as popular as he was back then. But it was great to see Eddie Murphy on screen as Prince Akeem again. And in this case, I mean, he does become King Akeem. And he is dealt with the issue of the Zamunda legacy where Zamunda they have to have a man as the heir to the throne and he has three daughters but he finds out that he has a son that was conceived from the original time that they him and uh, Arsenio Hall's character Simi went to New York in the original film so that is played by Jermaine Fowler 
and he, I think he did a really good uh, good job at acting as um, his character, who is Lavelle Johnson is his name, and Leslie Jones is his mother in that. Her name is Mary Johnson, and they added a lot of um, great acting to the film. I'm not always the biggest Leslie Jones fan, but I thought that she played a really good role, and she added most of the comedy to the film. Between her and Wesley Snipes' character, they really added a lot, a lot of comedy to the film. Wesley Snipes played an awesome role. He was General Izzy in the film, and he actually was coming to almost attack um, Prince Akeem and the royal family based off of the way that Eddie Murphy basically dissed his cousin, who was played by Vanessa Bell Calloway in this film and the original, uh, whenever he didn't want to marry her and ended up going to New York and finding Lisa McDowell. I felt like the plot was really good. Um, I really liked the plot of this film. I thought that it was well written. Um, the comedy, it's not as funny as the first one to me, but it is funny. And I do see a lot of people that actually enjoyed the comedy in the film. They said they were cracking up. Um, there were times when I did laugh. I can't say that I actually cracked up at the film, but I did laugh at times. Um, I thought that the tension between um, Tracy Morgan's character, who plays Uncle Ring, who's Jermaine Fowler's uh, uncle in that film, the tension between Tracy Morgan and Arsenio Hall was really funny throughout the film. I thought Leslie Jones played an excellent role in this. I thought this was probably one of her better roles. Um, thought she was really funny in this one. It was cool to see McDowell's in the actual film as well because that was like a big staple from the original. And it was good to see a lot of the older characters from the film. One part that I, uh, a couple parts actually that I thought were kind of corny were the little singing, dancing, uh, rapping scene with Tayona Taylor and uh, Jermaine Fowler. I didn't like that too much. And the like final scene with Randy Watson. I thought it was good to see Randy Wat Watson in the film, but it was like they were just bringing back a bunch of people with the end. And I'm like, okay, this wasn't necessary. They could have played this off a little bit better instead of like rushing this at the end. But I'm sorry, that was a spoiler alert, but you know, it's been almost two weeks. You might have seen the film by now. It was on Amazon Prime. But anyway, I thought the film was good. I would probably go ahead and give it a 6 out of 10. And the reason why I say 6 out of 10 is because I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was great. I thought that it was a good sequel to the original film. I didn't expect it to be great, so I can't say that it was a terrible film. I don't think it was terrible at all. I thought it was well acted. I thought it was well written. I just don't think it lived up to the original film which is what I see a lot of people saying as well, but I see a lot of people just tearing the film apart, and it wasn't a bad movie. So if somebody that really isn't too familiar with the original film and sees this one, I think they would like the movie. One, it's good to see a lot of black actors and actresses in a film. It's good to see as represented. Um, I thought that they had a lot of good uh, set design. I thought that the cameos in the film were good. Even Rick Ross was in the film. And to my understanding, a lot of it was actually filmed at Rick Ross's home. I thought that they did enough nostalgic moments and didn't kill it, overkill it with the nostalgic moments. And I thought that this film really served this purpose. I thought it was a good sequel. I thought it was a good way to get some people back in the limelight like Wesley Snipes it's good to see him acting again I thought it was good to see Sherry Headley in the film um James Earl Jones I mean he it seems like he never stops doing some type of work and it's good to see Arsenio Hall it's like you really don't see Arsenio Hall unless you're watching a Magic Johnson or Eddie Murphy documentary that's the only time you really see Arsenio Hall is when they talk to him about them him being the best friends of Magic Johnson and, and Eddie Murphy so it was good to see all of those people represented. I thought this film did what a lot of Eddie Murphy films does, which is give um, a lot of light to actors that we may not be familiar with. And Jermaine Fowler was that. I thought he did a good role. I thought Kiki Lane did a great role. Um, Eddie Murphy's daughter, um, one of his daughters, was in the film as well, playing one of his daughters. And I thought that um, Taylor Taylor played her role well as well. So... 
I would recommend to watch the film. I think it's a good film that you could watch with uh, by yourself, with a partner, with family. Honestly, it, it was good. And I think that it was enough to for me to be like, okay, um, I'm done with that franchise. And I'm okay with the way that they completed it. So I would recommend to see Coming to America. Um, and if you haven't seen the original, please watch Coming to America from 1988. It... It may not make you laugh depending on your age, but it's not one of those films where you shouldn't be able to understand the references. And everything in that film was just classic. Um, great Eddie Murphy film. Great performances all around in that one. Um, and then go ahead and watch the new film, Coming to America, which is on Amazon Prime. So again, 6 out of 10 on that. And let's go ahead and do the Wings and Wine review. Okay, we're going to do the Wings of Wine review, but I got to take this wig off. This soul glow ain't popping for me right now. So, I'm going to take that off. For the Wings, the Six Pepper Blend from Mario's East Side Saloon in Shady Side. Mm, this is good. It's actually really good. Yeah. So I've been to Mario before. Of course, I had their garlic parm. I love it. Not the best garlic parm in the city, but it's good. Um, and I had, I believe, their honey habanero before. Me and my friends would go to Mario's a lot back in our like earlier twenties, and um, they used to have like. Two dollar blue moons all day, and you also used to be able to get like this huge gobbler blue moon, and that would like pretty much serve you for like several hours. But I always used to get their wings, sandwiches. Their pizza is actually fire too. If you ever go there, you don't want to try their wings, then try out their pizza because their pizza is really good. Um, this is really delicious though. You get eight wings for about twelve dollars, and with that, I mean, you get the eight wings. They give you like ranch, or you can. I think you can request blue cheese, but they gave me ranch as well. And then they give you celery and carrots. And I'll show a closer look on the actual um, episode as well. So you're actually able to see the seasoning on the on the wings. Um, they do mix it up with uh, flats as well as drums. This is a smaller, it's like a wing ding almost. It's not a full wing as you would have seen like in the last episode with Dirty Birds. But um, this is this is a really good wing. It's seasoned very well. This was Mario's. Um, I'll give it a 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I really like these wings. I think that um, they do fill you up. They give you enough of them to to fill you up as well as the, the actual seasoning is is more than enough as far as what I would want in a wing. Mario's six pepper blend wings were very delicious. It is a dry rub so you don't have all that sauce around you. It does come with carrots as well as celery and they did give me ranch dipping sauce. I would definitely go ahead and try these out. It's not too spicy. So if you're looking for a very spicy wing, this might not be it for you. But you can taste all the flavor of the seasoning on these wings. For the wine, again, we have OPP. It's Other People's Pino. And this is from Mason War Wines. And it's created by Andre Mack. This is, uh, like I said before, I think it's the second time I've had this wine. It is pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and taste it right now. It has a good smell, so I mean, you can get the aroma like whenever you actually open up the bottle. It is a good, good flavor. It has the earthy tones. Um, it has like a hint of cherry in there. You could taste that in there, that uh, flavor in there as well.
Yeah, it's a nice red red wine. Um, I do really enjoy that. Uh, it's it's a good wine to actually have the for just like a day out. Like maybe if you're having like um, maybe a cookout at your house or you're out with some friends or you're having like some type of house event. Um, this is a good wine to have. It's pretty affordable. I think it was about like somewhere in the sixteen to twenty dollar range, somewhere around there, and it's pr readily available. I've seen it at the um, wine and spirits that I go to several times, and it's usually there. It's um, it's a very uh, cool bottle with an OPP on there. I mean, it's pretty much sticks out to you, especially if you're like a hip hop fan, because you know we know Naughty by Nature OPP, but the red wine itself is just it's really good um it is a twist off cap it's not corked um that could be frowned upon amongst the wine enthusiasts but the taste is there um it's it's not like one of those bottles where you drink it right now and then uh maybe you come back to it tomorrow where the you start to taste the sediment it's not like that um this is actually a good red wine that you can enjoy um, it doesn't get too strong, although it's 13.9% um, alcohol volume, it doesn't feel like it's too strong. So you really uh, get to taste the flavor and enjoy the flavor of the wine. So OPP, um, Other People's Pino, I would give this one a 7 out of 10. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because it is a good wine. It's not the best, but it's a good wine. It's affordable. Um, it's a good black owned brand as well, which um, I don't know in Pittsburgh. I feel like it's, it's kind of hard for me to find a lot of black owned wine uh, brands. So I'm going to do my research a little bit more to do that, to find that. Um, I do want to venture out to different um, countries, not just American wines. I want to try the Italian, Australian, and um, actually have them on the show. I've tried several throughout outside of the show, but I do want to get into more into detail and give more consistent reviews on wine. But I'll go ahead and give you an update on the bottle, uh, show you a close up on the bottle, show you uh, details about the wine, and I'll put more details about the wine in the description of this video. Um, again, this is OPP, Other People's Pino. It's a Pino Noir, not a Pinot Grigio. It's a Pinot Noir, it's a red wine. And this is by Mason Noir Wines. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Mason Noir Wines, Other People's Pino Noir, also known as OPP, is a good wine. Um, it's from Oregon. They are a black-owned brand by Andre Mack. It's very accessible. You can actually find it at a great value within uh, wine and spirit stores. It's very good earthy spicy a little bit it does have a hint of cherry and some gingery like wood spice tones on there um the bottle is very unique but a lot of their bottles look similar so you'll understand that um when you see it, it is a mason war wine and obviously it's paying homage to naughty by nature's opp as well which i thought was pretty cool and very for the culture so you should definitely check out opp uh for the wings I did give it an 8 out of 10 for Mario's Six Pepper. Um, for the Coming to America, I gave a 6 out of 10 on the film review. Now, going forward, I am going to get more into the review of the wings and the wine, in which you will see more. We are going to have more interviews coming up. I'm getting into the scheduling process with several um, guests. And I will have them coming on. Um, I'll have a special episode coming soon. Once I can coordinate it. It's going to be numerous people on the episode. And this was episode 14 of Wings and Wine. My name is Derek. You can find me on all social media platforms. At City Needs Me. You can follow the Wings and Wine page. At Wings X Wine. Um, my shirt today. Is by Freshman Vintage. This is actually their own tea um shout out to e-man you can check out episode three um to check out the freshman vintage episode as well um where he's on there so this is a freshman vintage you can find them at freshman vintage on instagram and he has a lot of great vintage products um i would definitely say the best in the city for sure having gone to several vintage places 
I mean, he has original products, so I'll definitely check him out. Um, again, this is episode 14 of Wings and Wine. Like, comment, and subscribe on the video. And check out the previous episodes as well. Check out the last the beauty series um, that featured three different guests. And you can learn a lot, especially if you're looking to get into the beauty industry or you're looking to learn some beauty tips at home. And again, my name is Derek. You have a great evening. Thank you.